Uh, Coach, let's talk obviously about Dylan Sampson and the day he had. What, what, what did you like about what he did on the field, and how do you, how impressed were you with the way he carried himself, not getting to play the week before, and how he went about business? Right. Well, well first of all, I, I think the way that he ran the ball was extremely well. Uh, we talk about a lot of times in our room about teach tape, and the way he pressed the double teams, made a decision at the last second, full speed decision, and then you kind of saw a lot of the natural ability uh, kind of expose itself in the open field, breaking tackles, being able to use his off arm to try to stiff arm guys and stuff like that and get away from bodies. So just the, the amount of work that he's put in to work on his craft, to make sure he understands the game plan, and just make sure he understands where those free hitters are down in and down out. Uh, as far as you know, coming into this last week where he didn't get a chance to very play very much, if at all, uh, the previous week, like just the way he handled himself in the building. You know, you see a lot of guys, especially young guys, they kind of have an attitude and, and they're different when they come in the building at times, especially when things don't go their way. But Samson didn't do that. You know, he worked the same. Matter of fact, he probably worked even a little bit harder to show us that he deserved a role in every game plan. And uh, I think the more you see him on the field, I think he's constantly getting better every time he touches the field. You guys have talked about uh, playing the hot hand and then flow of the game as well. I think Coach Hypo had mentioned that. In determining who gets those carries and who gets in the game, can you speak to, to making those determinations on the go and maybe if there's anything that Dylan Sampson needs to improve on in order to earn more of those opportunities? Well, kind of go to backwards. Like they all can improve on certain things. I mean, nobody's perfect in our room. We, we all have some deficiencies that we're constantly trying to get better at. But just for the standpoint of how we kind of rotate the guys a little bit, you know, right now, you know, depending on the game plan, it, it just kind of depends on you know who, what the game plan dictates and who we put in first. Uh, the last few weeks, you can see Jay Wright runs out there first. Uh, last week, you know, Jabari ended up with more snaps than Jay Wright. The previous week, Jay Wright ended up with more snaps than Jabari. As far as how Sam fits in that entire role, it just depends on what kind of package. I think there always going to be a package or a set of situations that we won't sap in the game just because of his skill set is a little bit different. Like all three of them, all three of those guys' skill set is a little bit different from one another. But, you know, I think going forward, you, you're going to see quite a bit of Dylan Sampson for, for sure. What makes, back here, what makes uh, Jalen Wright so effective and where do you see him finding success against South Carolina's defense? Well, the, the way Jay Wright runs the ball from a violent standpoint, like extremely physical guy that can break tackles. When you look at, you know, his yards after contact, like they're, they're really good right now. You know, he, he, he you know, moves the pile like we like to say forward. He's a guy that, you know, he runs physical. He runs with better pad level than he has the last two years. And I think that's what allows him to have some success. As far as like where, where he fits in, in South Carolina, I mean, just do the, the, the little things at a high level. That's really all it's about. You know, he doesn't have to do any anything special uh, outside of framework of what he normally does. Just do all those little things. Like we talk about ball security is what he's got really good at, pressing the double teams, being able to read the blocks, protection, making sure his eyes and discipline is to the right place. If he does all those little things at a high level, he'll have success against everybody we play. When you're trying to, when you're trying to figure out which running backs to play, who gets the snaps, how much is – how much do you look at what the offense needs overall, not just what which running back is in the flow of the game, but what the offense needs? Definitely. I think that's where it all starts. Like you take a couple of weeks ago uh, against Florida, you know, we didn't get as many snaps as we would like during the game. We found ourselves in a position where we had to play catch up some. So from a standpoint of maybe throwing the ball a little bit more, pass protection, obviously Jay Wright and, and Jabari are a little bit bigger than Dylan Sampson. So those were some situations where we felt like, hey, we, we got to get a little bit stouter guy. But then as the Florida game goes, if it's going back and forth, there's always going to be a situation where you need that certain, certain like burst or that pop that Sampson gives you in the game. Obviously, he can catch the ball on the perimeter extremely well. And he's a, what we call a space guy. When he gets the ball in space, it is hard to, to tackle him. He can make defenders miss. He has a really good feel of bodies and spatial awareness around him. Overall, as a whole, how, how would you grade through four games the pass protection of your running backs? Where would you, what do you like what they're doing? What would you like to see them improve on? Uh, I do think they're probably rated right a B plus right now. Uh, from a standpoint of, I like where their eyes are in the protection. I like they always are where they're supposed to be. I do want to see more physicality at the point of attack, making sure there's nobody at all around Joe or, or whatever quarterbacks in the game. So the physicality standpoint has to continue to improve. But as far as you know, the pad level and where their eyes are starting they rarely if at all I think in the last four games really ever out of position it's just about making sure they're more physical at the point of attack 
Coach, what do you see in South Carolina's defense? What are going to be the keys for your position group and kind of the run game and the offense as a whole? Well, the front seven is really good. I, you know, I'm really impressed with the linebacker <laughs> position. Those guys fly around. Uh, they're really aggressive, physical. Uh, you know, you can see the improvement that they had in that group from year to year uh, over the last few years that we've been playing them. I think in my position, you know, specifically, we just got to do a really good job of, of continuing to run with physicality in between the tackles. There's going to be tough, tight runs, and those windows and those lanes are going to be smaller as we get into more SEC play. Uh, you know, you, some of those other games, sometimes that grass that the offensive line is, is, is creating is extremely big because of the, the competition that you're playing. Man, in the SEC, it is not like that. The, the, those grass or those seams become smaller and smaller, and when they do open up, they close a lot faster just because of the people that we're playing. And so we got to do a great job of seeing those, making decisive decisions, and accelerating when we get that opportunity. When you look at that South Carolina defense, is there one running back that you have, whether it be Samson, Jabari, or Jalen, that really you feel can emerge and you feel the most confident with giving the ball to? I know you mentioned how different games present different opportunities. Is there one that you think really fits the mold to be able to have success against South Carolina? Man, it's interesting you asked that question because like we just had a conversation about that in the meeting room the other day about how all three of those guys' skill set is, is distinctly different and they have nothing but ultimate trust, trust from our coaching staff. I think all of them, I never know who's going to have the big game. You know, it's been Jalen, obviously it's been Jabari over the years as well. Now you see Samson emerging. Like all three of them guys present a different skill set and it's just really about the the flow of the game. There may be an opportunity for uh, Jabari or Sam or whoever to go out there and catch something on the perimeter or break a break a tackle in the, in the backfield. And next thing you know, it's 60, 70 yards because they all have dynamite quickness and speed as well. So I really don't ever know uh, who's going to get that opportunity. I do. I can't tell you this. We trust them 100%. Whoever goes in the game. Jerry, I guess that there are still some places where you might see a guy get 25 plus carries in a game, but it seems like those those days for the most part are, are done. In, in terms of the, the camaraderie, the chemistry you need in that room, how, how much more important is that maybe than it has been in the past in terms of those guys having to understand, listen, I might get 20 one week, I might get eight the next week, and that's just how it is. Man, we're blessed to have a, a group of young men and a group of kids that really understand that. Uh, you know, in the past, we have not had that opportunity to, to say, hey, look, these guys are going to distribute the carries around the room because we haven't felt comfortable putting all those different people in the game at that certain time. And now what you see is over the course of years, Jalen has had some injuries over the years. Jabari's had some injuries over the years. So now, you know, you add the addition to Dylan Sampson, his role is increasing. I think they welcome that opportunity to understand that, hey, you know, as a team to get where we're trying to go and to, get, to accomplish our goals, we're going to all have to be here for one another. And and the selflessness that they have, uh, that's really extreme. That's different than what you see across the country right now. You don't really see that. Uh, there may be a time, though, you know, this, co this coming year where one of those guys may have to have 25 carries a game. It just depends on what the flow of the game kind of dictates. Right now, we haven't had that luxury, but you do see guys getting 20-plus touches, whether we throw the ball to them on the perimeter or whether we, uh, we do some different things with them uh, in the backfield. Coach, you saw Joe had the big run on, on the first play. Uh, can you expand uh, as a coach uh, in detail just how much that will help your run game to have that running threat on those option looks from the quarterback position? Oh, that's huge. Like the ability to have a running quarterback or a true dual threat quarterback, especially one that can cross the goal line with speed like Joe did on the, on the long run, I mean, that presents some problems all the time. So whether it's more opportunities for the running backs because, you know, those defensive ends or those linebackers, it's there in the read keys, they understand that the quarterback is a valuable threat. It changes the box. It changes what it looks like on the roof as well from the safety position. So like there's a lot of things that having that dual threat style of quarterback can open up for us. It creates more touches for us, uh, which I mean, they're all welcome to that. Thank you. Coach. Thank you.